Welcome to the Chef's Bar, a front row seat for a family-style feast thrown down by me, Craig Harding, and my fellow chef and restaurant owner, Rob Rossi. Each week, we'll invite three special guests to hang out at the bar and watch us cook up rustic dishes inspired by our travels abroad. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming out to another episode of The Chef's Bar today. We've got a really ambitious meal. So before we get started, though, I want to introduce you guys. So it's Hasela Vileza and, and Kate Gleg. Uh, the two of you started Tum, uh, which is a Toronto underground market a few years ago, and it's been such a great thing for the city of Toronto. Absolutely, uh, thank you. And the same, the same for Steve. I mean, you've opened this restaurant Valdez, Steve Gonzalez, chef, restaurateur, proud Colombian, and you're here we're taking a night off to work with us and, and eat our food and just kind of drink some beer and hang. Yeah, I'm, I'm hyped, man. You know, yeah? I, you know, as a chef, Somebody's gonna cook for you, I'm down. We're, we're a little bit inspired by Argentina, for sure. Totally. We just got back, uh, we wanna cook things that we learned, and hopefully, I'm kinda of freaked out now. Yeah. Especially about Steve. <laughs> and Steve and his hell. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay, you know what, we're gonna try our best. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna make something that you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy regardless. The first dish, it's gonna be a tricky one. So I'm gonna get that started. Why yeah. don't you go over cool. how we came to, to experience that? For sure. Yeah, we were traveling in Argentina and we were in the south in Patagonia and uh, there's a traditional way of cooking meat. Uh, it's called a curanto. So essentially what it is, is they are cooking meat buried with coals, leaves, uh, and dirt. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. It smells amazing. The leaves didn't yeah. even burn. No, it's like they just create, they just gave them. No, it is burnt. Oh my lord. Wow. Great. That's nice. It's, it's gonna be difficult for us to create that taste because there's no fire. We thought, how can we downscale this idea of cooking something, you know, in a, in a closed environment with a lot of different vegetables and it gives it that roasted but that steam quality. And then I thought like, oh my God, we could crust it with salt. We could do like a salt crust. So this is a salt actual, this is a dough that's made with a large amount of salt. And I'm gonna basically put these vegetables, keep them whole, very rustic, like they had, you know, like he was doing in Argentina. And I'm gonna cover it and we're gonna put it in the oven and forget about it. We're gonna cross our fingers. <laughs> and we're gonna hope it's cooked and it tastes oh, good. Get, the, I can't wait. The okay. amazing thing though is when he was actually doing this, he was putting certain vegetables in certain spots. Hot right. spots. Because he knows yeah. that, okay, you know what, the apples can handle, you know, intense heat, okay, and you know, the carrots can, the squash can. I've got this beautiful leg uh, of lamb. It's semi-boned. I still have the main bone in here, which is gonna give it some flavor and some structure. I've studded it with a bit of rosemary, and I'm gonna put a few pieces of uh, garlic uh, in, uh, in some of these little slices that I've made into the lamb. And then we're pretty much gonna like put this veg in and just let it let it go. Forget about it. All right, so let's start the bed here of a veg. Um, we got potatoes. We got some purple potatoes. Some different fingerlings. We bought some. You know, we've got some pumpkin as well. Uh, a few carrots. And then uh, yeah, get some onions in there. Yeah, we'll get some onions. Tiny Keep it nice here. and whole. All right, there's the leg. Awesome. And we'll go all the way around with some more veg. And it's gonna it's gonna steam the you know the juices are gonna mix the lamb's gonna kind of release a little bit of a little bit of liquid which will then hopefully get reabsorbed by a lot of this veg and we can. Did get... they actually wrap the meat in anything? No. So the what, they just was, put what it... was protecting the meat was it the was leaves? Was just the leaves. Right. So that sandwiched basically sandwiched that together. Well, Blankets went over top, and then it was um, it was the hot rocks. Right. Yeah. More hot rocks. Right on top. Holes. And then, and then dirt, All right, so just like tons nice. of dirt. I'm gonna give that a little egg wash. I wanna seal. create a nice seal here. Nice. It reminds me of cochinita bivil, the which Mexican is? dish, yeah. which the pork that gets wrapped in achiote pay, or achiote herbs and then the banana leaves, banana right? Leaves, and, they and it gets dug down, underground. Yeah. yeah. It's very, it's very similar to yeah, that. Yeah, in Hawaii, I mean, they have similar things right. too. I, it's, it's in it, you know, it's a... Um, it's a technique. It's a technique, yeah. yeah. Very it's old school technique. It's a very yeah, old school. I've been doing this very for like, primitive way yeah. to cook, right? Right, right. I mean, how do you create an oven, right? Yeah. That's essentially what they're thinking. We're just going to... We're patch it up. We'll patch this up. It'll be fine. This is tough dough. That'll be glorious. Yeah. And so that and that, that dough is not... Is gonna, will it be edible or...? No, no. unfortunately... It's, it's, just gonna, for the, it's just for the cooking process. It's for the cooking process, yeah. I think it is pretty important though that it's actually sealed though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get some 
a little bit of. Um, you don't want to lose too many juices. No, and you want to and you want to get to keep that steam in because that steam is going to help it go. All right, so we're going to drop this into the oven here at uh, 400, and we're gonna we'll check the temp in about an hour, but we'll just let it do its thing. Leave it alone. And meanwhile, we're gonna keep cooking. We're gonna eat some empanadas. Excelente. Steve, for sure you know more about empanadas than I do. <laughs> I've, I've, I've made a couple different different kinds, yeah. You know, today we have some braised oxtail. Yeah. Oh. Well, we're gonna put some finely yeah. chopped vegetables. We're gonna sweat that out, get that, get it nice and sweet, and then we're gonna cook the, the liquid with the oxtail and make it nice and sticky. Mm. And then okay, so I'm just gonna start the mirepoi, guys. Do it. A little carrots, onion, celery. They're just like really small. Oh, nice little onions. Oh, they're baby onions. Yeah. Pretty onions. Yeah. And then if you want to do some garlic, that'd be amazing, Greg. Yeah, Greg. absolutely. Yeah, we need some beer. Always. <laughs> My thoughts are we'll just oh, sweat this snap, off. I hate beer so much. Um, we'll season it very gently. I won't do anything too crazy to it. I might even just add a little paprika. I think that Ooh, might be nice. Oh, nice. Um, although it's not smoked or anything, so it's not going to have crazy flavor. All right. Check away. Yeah, a little black pepper. Tasty. Nice. That's it, right? Yeah. So, Steve, um, I haven't had a chance to go to your restaurant. I don't know if you've been, but tell us Not yet, what, what's up with it. Well, uh, so Valdez, we're, we're Latin American street food. You know, it's a concept that I've been kind of working on for the last three years. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was able to test it out at Tum. You know, people loved it. And, so cool. Yeah, great. You know, I had already done all my recipe testing by the time uh, the right. restaurant opened, right? Um, you know, it's just big flavors, yeah. bold. I love it's that. It's kind of loud. <laughs> some people, some people like it. Some people don't like it. You know, some people it's their jam, right? They like yeah. that. I don't know. Um, you can't, you can't make, you know, across the board, you can't please everybody. No, you, you can't. Gotta stick man. to what your true, you know, what you got to figure out what your brand so is. Right. You got to figure out right. what your brand is and keep yeah. to it, right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm just gonna Good. add a little bit of uh, paprika. I'm just gonna kind of get those spices waking up a little bit. The no. oxtail, it, this is just all the braising liquid. Yeah. Yep. Um, right, the oxtail's cut up, so it's kind of like, it's kind of manageable. You can get that done in a reasonable amount of time. Right. Just a bit of time in there, guys. Like and we're gonna have now. to chill that down, aren't we? I usually do. Okay, guys, I think this is pretty much done. We're gonna add a little shift on a parsley. Yeah. Fresh I water. would add cilantro for you. But I won't. But I can't. It's okay. It's <laughs> <Sorry>. alright. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, let's stop them. Do it. That looks good. Un poquito de carne. <laughs> A little bit of meat. Yeah, yeah I would up. break that up for sure. I know more. I do. Break the eggs. <laughs> we might have some issues with these guys. No, no, we'll be okay. You want to learn a I trick? I feel okay about it. Yeah, I need a trick here. This is really... You have any saran wrap? Saran? Yeah, we got saran. And liquid. You need liquid. Okay. Hey, let's see. Do it. So this is the way I make the our empanadas at the restaurant, actually. But it's better when you're on, like, on stainless okay. steel and it'll kind of like hold down, right? Let me take this bad boy. Okay. And a little, uh, little, little bit of action here. I'd probably put like... Un poquito. Like this Un poquito, much. yeah. Put like that much. Okay. Yeah, half an olive there. Half. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I would break it down like this way you guys did there. Okay. But I'm, but I'm gonna go this way. Then an egg. The egg might even be a bit big. Yeah. I'll take the rest of it if you need me to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Muy bien. <laughs> from here, I'll take this guy. Oh, beautiful. That's the, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna take this guy. <laughs> that's what my grandma used yeah. to do. <laughs> the fork. Then when you have a little oh, bit of water. Oh my like... God. Look there at that. Go. Okay, cool, so Bravo, we got about uh, four more in there. <laughs> And then uh, you probably should egg wash them, actually. Yeah. Yeah, to like seal them? Yeah. yeah. Or just egg wash the outside. Just, just, to uh, for, just to make them beauty. If you make them, if you make the seal tight enough, you don't have to put the egg wash in between. 
Does that make sense? But you could still put it on the outside. But you so definitely put it on the outside. Yeah, it's it that. golden then. And then maybe even do the other side a little bit. Make them beauty. It's too I would love that. And it's not as nice. No, it's okay. It looks good. Fantastic. It's okay. You're Italian. It's okay. <laughs> The Italian in you, let it shine through. Yeah, there's like a big ravioli. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly what it is. It's a exactly. big ravioli. Well, you know, I got some English in me too. I should be able to make a friggin' South American pierogi. What? <laughs> a, I'm, not a, I'm not dissing. It's that's not a. Even, that's not a this. South American pierogi. That's <laughs> you know, amazing. This will I'm gonna egg wash them, okay guys? Good. This is a good opportunity to check the oven yeah. and pop these in. I've been told this has to get in the oven so we can eat. Thank you, little... Craig. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, that looks beautiful. Does that look like, I don't know, like a, like a lamb pie or something? Wow. All right. Delicious. We have one really spectacular sauce to make. It's a classic sauce, chimichurri. Again, I'm sure there's a thousand ways to make it. I'm sure you have a way and you have a way. <laughs> so, we brought a few different types of fresh herbs, some parsley, some oregano, and some cilantro. Now, would you use all of these, some of these, none of these? What? I would use some of those. Okay. Some of those. Not I'm going to say that cilantro is in No, that. I put cilantro in mine. For okay. Sure. Okay. What about this? No. No. Okay. No way. Out. <laughs> now, uh, what about this? Oh yeah. Parsley. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Done. Done. Why don't I start doing yeah? Some of this? Yeah. Mortar and pestle. Some That's... cumin. I'll just start cumin. grinding it up. Okay. Are you okay nice. letting go of oregano? It's miniature. Okay. So you got uh, what was that? Just the parsley? That's just the parsley. Okay, Is I that gotta add that to the bowl. Should I go finer? Plus, is the whole, like, for us, cilantro is a whole... The whole thing, the roots. It's a whole process, man. I can I can say that I think, you know, the, the flavor of the roots, the lower stems, the leaves, is very different. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to put a little bit of everything in then. Yeah, for me, cilantro, that's like the, the, the basis of all my cuisine, right? Right, right, right. And there's so much flavor in the stems. Oh, yeah, so okay. much flavor. Like even for the stems are, I mean, the stems so are like marinades and stuff flavor. too, right? It, honestly, when I see people like cut the stems and ditch them, yeah. it's a, it, it it's like heart. a physical reaction. It's heart. like it's heartbreaking, right? Isn't it heartbreaking? It's actually kind of it's I like a physical guy. reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I almost killed the guy once. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> All this came in. Oh yeah, man. All of it. Probably is enough. Let's get some oil in here just to, just to get it all coming together. You use olive oil or no? I use half and half. Half and half, yeah. yeah. Olive oil, it gets a little intense. Rob, well, I'm not making me these. I know. I just don't want to. <laughs> I know that, but I don't want to add too much veg oil because I don't like actually I'm eating this. I'm really stuff. enjoying this right now. That was so Italian. <laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. It's just pure oil. This is not pesto. Look at this monster. That's a nice press. Aww. Clickety clack. Yeah. Yay, Craig! We could do some like uh, some drumming with Don't, that. Don't, it's getting in my eye. <laughs> okay, what are we missing? Paprika? Yeah, let's, but you gotta get some, uh, I think we should do some lemon zest. I think we should put some garlic in there. Okay, a little bit, not even a whole clove. The way you work that and twist that, it's a, right. it's elegant. I've never I seen, know. I've never seen someone use a microphone. That's a, that's a micro technique for sure. That's a, that's a technique. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that for like ten years. Except, except that you just look at the finished lemon. Oh, well, right. No, I did this on purpose. This thing is digging into the pit. Yes. I don't want to make it bitter for you guys. That's true. That's actually look at the chuck. Okay, mix it up and taste it, Greg. See if it needs uh, salt or... Well, we haven't had any salt, so I can tell you it's gonna need salt. Okay, and I, I feel like the paprika, no you were really... Heavy-handed? Light with it. I don't know if you put enough. Mucha sal. Oh, no, no, listen, we're... We're all on the same team. Kilos here. right there. I know, I thought that... Two kilos. Well, I thought I'd be happy. Right walked here. into opposite land. I don't know. Probably needs more. Beautiful. More what, salt? Yeah. No, 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 no. I honestly, I think it's pretty, it's pretty
pretty good. I, I wish the, the good. zest was a bit finer. It's pretty good. Yeah. Gonzalez, ¿qué pasa? It's good to go, bro. Mm, está rico. All right, guys. I think uh, I think we're all oh. good on the uh, on the empanada front here. A little bit cracked, but all that's in all, okay. beautiful. That look good. That Golden first that, that first one, Steve. That's a fucking showstopper. Yeah. You may have made one with a wonton wrapper once or twice. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, with a Pillsbury uh, croissant, though. I went to Batmart. <laughs> okay, guys. We have the first empanadas. We made. Oxtail empanada, okay? A little bit of mirepoix, some thyme, paprika, lightly spiced, just like in Argentina. Muchas nice. gracias. Okay, we'll try it. We'll cut one in half here. The dough is super, super flaky. Mm -hmm. Super flaky in a positive way? I think you probably could have taken like maybe mm -hmm. a few more minutes. It's too flaky. I think a little bit less cook. Yeah, the dough is We're taking here. away from the inside a little bit. Eh? Yeah, a little bit. The the filling is amazing. Filling is dancing. Yeah, I wish I had a little bit too. Yeah, be right sorted. It's delicious. I love, I love the egg. Yeah. It's delicious. Mm. I love the egg. Oh, and yeah, the yeah, olive. The Are you kidding me? Mm. Olive. The olive. Super good. Perfect. If we don't make mistakes and we just no, this is you don't learn anything from it. So yeah, exactly. It's good to f things up sometimes. Yeah, you have to. It up to figure out how to make oh. it right. You do. This is the sort of moment of truth, if you will, <laughs> to check out this uh, crusted uh, lamb leg. I'm excited. This is sort of our pseudo curanto. That with bread flour or? Yeah, bread flour. And just water. Water and salt? <laughs> so <Eggs. laughs> No, there's, there's egg, egg whites. Too. Oh, egg whites would make sense. Oh, that's why. That's why it's super crusty. <sighs> well done, Craig. It smells amazing already. Yeah, you replicated the same effect. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. There you go. Oh. Serve it right inside. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lift the lift the lamb leg off. I'm gonna start slicing. How does it look? That's that's not bad. It's wow. perfect. It's tender. Oh Juicy. God. Juicy. That's how I like most things. <laughs> tender most and juicy. Things. Some things I don't. <laughs> What? I'm talking about food, man. We get talking about. Watch out! There's uh, some garlic hidden, hiding. Mmm. Yeah, just take a little front piece off. It's nice, you know, to encapsulate everything, have it all cooking together. Yeah, and all those juices come together, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know. Like the potatoes are gonna taste like lamb. The lamb's gonna taste like potatoes yeah. and pumpkin and stuff, right? Good, this is great. All right. Mm. All right, we'll do the veg here. Yeah. <laughs> this is just, you know what, all natural. There's an onion. Okay, awesome. Beautiful. There's a potato. It's This is super, Beautiful. super rustic, right? You got a carrot, a little bit of pumpkin. Let's see. Caliente. This is our best. Uh, our best version of a, of a curanto. It's our best impression of it. Done inside in an oven. Okay, Steve, chip me that up. Awesome. Down. Put that shit on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this chimichurri smells awesome. Mm -hmm. Chimichurri just has a way of making it exciting. Right? right? It just yeah. makes everything pop. I know? wish I could serve cumin at my restaurant sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I didn't find the potato salt, you know? No? No, the carrots are though. You know what's crazy? Is there's no salt on here. Like, I did not salt this at all. Wow. I know we didn't bring the fire to this like they do in Argentina, which is such a huge part of their cuisine, that primal that thing. But I think we did it justice. This is so good, guys. It really is. Well done. Yeah, yeah actually. All right, now we're on to the last of, uh, last of our meal today. Something sweet, something classic that we had there for the first time 
for me, and I was just like, I was blown away at the variety and at how many places sold this. Mm -hmm. Alfajores. Mm -hmm. So we start with our little uh, shortbread cookie, and then we have a dulce de leche, which is one of the many flavors. Is it possibly like the classic flavor? I don't know, but it's a popular one. Yeah, you need a pile on there so when you squish it, yeah. it has enough to pick up the coconut. Oh, right. of course. Yeah, that's right. All right, which is what we have here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's only about, what, 900 calories per cookie? It's good. That's it. Boom. Perfect. Nice. Now you roll it in coconut. I'm gonna roll in the coconut. It's kind of a, I like coconut, but it's kind of nice because then it doesn't, your hands don't get sticky. There you go. So we have uh, our version of the alpajores with uh, dulce de leche and some coconut. Again, it's not mm -hmm. like it, it's not exactly how we. It's a little more dense. Yeah, they're usually a lot, lot fluffier. A lot fluffier, but you know, they need to be a little bit fluffier so when you bite through, it doesn't squish like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still tasty though. Mm -hmm. But it's good because you can hold up the dulce leche. Perfect little dessert. Mm -hmm. I had a great time with you guys. Beautiful meal. Really well done. So much attention to the culture and the flavors. And I like that you put your own spin on it. Then definitely, I think as chefs, that's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. Take something that we've learned, that we've really enjoyed and experienced, and we want to replicate it. Yeah, we want other people to enjoy it too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, I'll be the degenerate <laughs> the whole bottle. <laughs> With the bottle. Guys, yeah, it's not there. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. Until next time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.